Welcome, dear church. Pastor Mary here from Peace Lutheran Church, Springfield, Illinois. We are so glad to have you join us this evening for our midweek Advent devotion. Take a moment, get yourself comfortable, as we consider each week the life of a particular saint and how they might inspire us during these Advent days. And so friends, let us worship. So oh God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set the lights in the sky to govern the night and day. In every age you call imperfect people to be bearers of your light, bright with your wisdom, aflame with your righteousness, like the stars forever. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ, kindled in the stable, magnified on the cross, and reflected in the lives of your holy people. With them and with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 9. A shoot shall come out of the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends the lesson. So I have a question for you. Did you ever line your shoes up outside the door or maybe in front of the fireplace? Not because they were smelly, not because they were covered with mud or snow, but instead so that St. Nicholas might leave you a gift. It's a tradition that's practiced around the world and in some places here in the States where children on the night before the 6th of December will take their shoes and line them up outside the door or in front of a fireplace in the hope that St. Nicholas would leave a gift for them. However, if you've been naughty during the past year, you are liable to wake up and find a lump of coal in your shoes. Talk more about that later. So who was this Nicholas of Myra, or AKA St. Nicholas? 
Have you ever heard of the ancient land of Lycia? It's along the southern coast of what we now know as Turkey. It's a very compact and mountainous territory. Artifacts from the Lycian people date as far back as 2000 BCE, before the Christian era. These people had their own language and their own alphabet. They were known to be a fiercely free and independent people. In fact, they gave rise to what is known as the earliest form of, of a demo de democratic federation. Right, de democracy, right? Even before the Greeks. In fact, the Greeks studied them because they, they did this democratic thing so well. The Greek city-states were in a constant uproar and turmoil and at war with each other, whereas the Lycian cities enjoyed relative peace. One more, I think, interesting bit about the Lycian people is that they went by their mother's name as opposed to their father's name. So if someone were to ask them, from whose family do you come? They would use the mother's name. Interesting bit of information. So it's into this unique and ancient people in a small village named Patara that Nicholas was born around the year 280. He was born to wealthy parents who raised him as a devout follower of Christ. Sadly, Nicholas's parents died during an epidemic while he was still young. His uncle, a bishop, took him in. Eventually, Nicholas became a priest, and he decided to follow Jesus' command to sell what you have and give the money to the poor. He used his entire inheritance that he had gotten from his wealthy parents to assist the needy and the sick and the suffering. While still a relatively young man, because he was so known for his goodness and his generosity, he was actually made a bishop, Bishop of Myra, which was a nearby city. Nicholas was known throughout the land for this generosity. He was known for his love of children. Unfortunately, when Emperor Diocletian opposed the Christians, he had Nicholas imprisoned for his faith. After his release from prison, he attended the Council of Nicaea in 325. Nicholas died on December 6, 343. He was buried in the cathedral church, and a hundred years later, he was canonized as a saint. But that wasn't the end of what we know about Nicholas. As he was so well known and beloved of the people, and you know what happens when you're well known and beloved of the people, stories and, and legends arise. One such legend that we have handed down to us is of a poor man with three daughters. It was the father's responsibility to offer a dowry to prospective husband. The larger the dowry, the better the chance to find a good husband. Unfortunately, this poor man had no money to offer as a dowry, so it became very unlikely that his daughters would marry. Instead, they would be sold into slavery. As it happens, mysteriously, if you will, on three separate nights, a small ball or bag of gold was tossed into the daughter's windows until each one of them had a dowry in order to be married. Those small bags of gold according to legend, once they were thrown into the window, landed in the girl's shoes. There began the tradition of gifts on December 6th, a practice still 
observed in Europe and here in America. However, here in the States, we've taken that tradition of, of giving gifts and we've moved it to Christmas Day. And St. Nicholas, Bishop Nicholas of Myra, became what we know of as Santa Claus, a character that comes anonymously and leaves gifts. So what might we learn from St. Nicholas? What might he inspire in us? First of all, I think we can agree that he inspires in us a sense of, of generosity. A sort of generosity that doesn't look for recognition and applause. He used his inheritance, all that he had for others. How might we use what we've been gifted with for others? Helping the homeless here in Springfield or LSSI. Perhaps we can use our our financial gifts to support Grace Food Pantry or Lutheran World Relief. A sense of generosity. Second thing that Nicholas can inspire or model for us is care for the vulnerable. Like the three young women in the legend Perhaps during this Advent season, we might ask ourselves, who are the vulnerable among us? And how might we reach out to care for them? And finally, Nicholas models for us a sense of humility, a sort of humble care for others. In the many, many legends about Nicholas, it indicates that he not only shared his wealth, but he did it without fanfare. He did it quietly, not demanding attention. He had a heart of a humble follower of Jesus Christ. In this season of preparation for the greatest giver of all, it's good to remember the Christ who inspired Nicholas to generosity and to care for the vulnerable. May we give humbly and boldly, caring for our neighbor and stranger. May we give with confidence and a trust that God will indeed bless our giving as well. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your messengers to tell of the birth of your son, that people might believe in him. Open our ears to hear your call, to repent of our sins, and to seek our heavenly inheritance. Give us hearts of generosity, speak to us through scripture, and use us to be messengers of the good news of Messiah. May we profess Christ until we stand by his grace before your glory, Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May God, the strength of our ancestors and the hope of our children, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.